And everybody get settled down now. Find your place there. I will ask you to have just as uh, little moving around as possible. This morning it's very distracting when you when you uh, jump up, move around, and go out and all of that. So uh, be mindful of the people around you. And unless you just have to, or it's an emergency, or mother with a baby, uh, please keep your seats this morning. Parents, see to it that that happens if you would. Proverbs chapter 1. There's an interesting verse here in Proverbs chapter 1 that I think fits our nation, America. If you're a Christian with any spiritual discernment or sense at all, and I might even say, maybe if you're not a Christian, but you've got sense anyway, um, you're concerned about our nation and what's happening to us as a nation. And there's a verse here in Proverbs chapter 1 that fits our nation. Verse 32. Verse number 32. If you look at it there. Verse number 32. The book says here about a people that wouldn't listen when God warned them. He warned them in verse 25, 26. 27, 28, 29, they wouldn't listen. And he said in verse 31, Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Now look what it said would destroy those people in verse 32. The prosperity of fools. The Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. Uh, There's nowhere in the Bible where it says it is a sin to prosper. There's nowhere in the Bible where it's a sin, it says it's a sin to have a lot or have a lot of money or be rich for that matter. The Bible does say the love of money is the root of all evil. You can lay a dollar bill down right there on that pulpit this morning, and by itself, it can't help you, it can't hurt you. It's made good or bad by what you do with it and what it does to you. And prosperity is like that. There, Some of the greatest men in the Bible were prosperous. David, Solomon, the richest man in the country. But you know what the difference was? Solomon wasn't a fool. He was a wise man. And it takes a lot of wisdom to be able to handle prosperity. Now, what's wrong with our nation this morning? America is, God has blessed us like no other nation has ever been blessed. We've got more. Uh, Forgive me if if you don't agree with this, and I don't mean to be rude or anything, but I'm wondering where this terrible recession is that everybody's talking about. I've never seen nicer cars going up and down the road. I've never seen people wearing better clothes. We, we people, people get on the radio and they'll say, boy, the last eight years of Republican government has ruined the world. Are you better off or worse off than you was ten years ago? Are you eating better food today or worse food? Are you eating more? I can tell that by looking at you. <laughs> now, now, come on, people. Get real. You know good and well you've got more now than you've ever had in your life. Unless you've had a tragedy, and I'm not speaking politically, I'm talking from common sense. You know common sense ain't too common? You can't hardly find it no more. I mean, people's brainwashed. They let the media do their thinking for them. Go out there on the side of the road and stand there for about an hour at service this morning and just watch what kind of cars people's got nowadays. I mean, I mean, you say, well, we're just barely making it. Well, I know we all say that, but come on now. Come on now. Look, look at the way your granddaddy was raised. We're doing... Well, God has blessed us like no other generation has ever been blessed. But I'll tell you something. Somebody said one time that prosperity is that that will tell you what a man is. If you want to see what kind of person a man is, let him prosper and it'll tell what kind of person he is. If he can handle it and still do right, he's a strong man. But a lot of people, when they prosper and they get ahead and they get a lot, 
then it goes to their head and it goes to their flesh and they have a tendency to just forget God and leave Him out of their life. That's what's happened to America. We now have more time and money on our hands than any other people in history. It's common nowadays to have a four-day work that week and a three-day vacation. God was not kidding when He said in the Bible, six days will a man work and make his living by the sweat of his face, and one day he'll rest. You give a man more than one day of rest a week, he'll get into trouble. <laughs> he'll get into something he ain't supposed to be in. God had a reason for saying six days work and one day rest. That's a, that's a biblical principle. Now, they say nowadays that almost, well, probably over 200 billion dollars a year is spent on leisure. Leisure days are here. Race tracks take in nearly $15 billion a year alone. They think, you know that thing they, uh, we're talking about, you know, uh, reducing the deficit and how we need money and saving money and this and that. You know that thing, the Kennedy Space Center or down there in Florida where it was the other day, shot up in the air the other day. Uh, it was kind of hush-hush on the news because they lost it. Did you hear about that? And they couldn't find that thing. We're trying to make contact with it and con trying to make contact. And they said, well, as of now, we do not know its location. That is a nice way of saying we shot a rocket ship up and can't find it. It's gone to who knows where. You know how much it cost? One billion dollars. We shot one billion dollars in outer space the other day. A billion dollars in over nine hundred million dollars. You say, well, we got to go on with the space program. I can tell you, there ain't nothing out there. You ain't going nowhere near where God lives. You can't make it that far. And if you find E.T., he'll be a demon manifested. And he, he ain't going to give him no Reese's Pieces, brother. You better run from him and, and get out on your knees and ask the Lord to help you. There ain't nothing out there going to help us. You say, well, we're going to advance and move to the moon. What are you going to breathe up there? There ain't no air. Moving to the moon, it wouldn't satisfy man's problems. No way. If you put a hundred human beings on the moon and says, yes, that's scientific advancement, there'd be beer cans laying around up on the moon and rights and switchblades sticking in each other. Sure would. That doesn't change man's basic problem. Prosperity today is ruining us. They say that our government now spends one billion dollars every four hours. Twenty-five billion dollars spent on our on our space program, the most expensive project ever on earth uh, released. Prosperity in itself is not a bad thing, but the Bible says prosperity of fools shall destroy them. If a person can't handle it, if they're a fool, their prosperity winds, winds up being their damnation. Three things I'd like to leave with you this morning briefly. The first thing is prosperity has produced in America unquote, I want it now attitude. Americans have an attitude now, I want it now. We're not willing to wait for anything. Most people today want what they want when they want it and are unwilling to wait for it. You know, how, well, you know what got us in this mess? A bunch of well-meaning parents and grandparents. They didn't mean anything bad by it, but the generation before us, before my generation when I was born, the ones before us, my daddy grew up in the 1940s and 30s and 40s, and my daddy had it real hard growing up. His mom and daddy had worse than that. A lot of them didn't have electricity. A lot of them didn't have indoor plumbing. A lot of them didn't have indoor restroom uh, uh, facilities. And they had it hard. A lot of your grandmothers and granddaddies worked their fingers to the bones just to make a living. Not to have extras, just to make a living. They thought if you was working only eight hours a day, you were loafing. You're on vacation. You're lazy. I mean, they'd work from sun up to sun down, out in the fields, raising the children, washing the clothes, scrub boards, hanging them out on the line, uh, preparing everything, raising most of what they eat in the garden. 
But they had it rough. God blessed America because America had a lot of Bible-believing, God-fearing people in it that preached the Bible and stood for the right, and God blessed America. Industry started thriving. Buildings and, and businesses started springing up and blessed through the 1950s and late 40s and early 60s and through that. And our parents came up and they said this, they said, my kids ain't going to have to do like I did. I'm going to make it possible. They're not going to have to get out. I'm going to give them this. And they went overboard with it and give them this and give them that and give them this and give them that. And we have now a generation of young people on the streets of America who have had everything they've ever wanted handed to them on a silver platter. They have never had to work to really pay for anything. They have just been give to and give to to where they think it is they think it, they, it's a right that they have. They feel like I deserve for so much money to be spent on me, and you take care of me and take care. And therefore, we have a generation of spoiled blacks on our hands who think that America owes them something and are not willing to work for it. And it has produced an attitude of I want it now. Did you know that a lot of young people in America grow up? To, I mean, uh, you can buy a car brand new right on the spot. Sign your name on the dotted line. If you want something you can't get the money for, all you got to do is lay down your credit card and they'll give it to you. If you see something you want to buy, buy it on credit. Uh, young people nowadays ain't been married one year and got a new house a new car, a boat, a, a plenty of food, and take two or three vacations. They've got more than their mom and daddy have when they've been married 20 years. They start out more with more now than mama and daddy had when they're on their 20th wedding anniversary. Sometimes uh, uh, people look at mom and daddy and say, boy, it must be nice to have this, have this, have that. They forget that years and years and years and years, mom and daddy had nothing. I remember when I was growing up, we didn't, when, I remember when I was just a kid, five years old, I was about five, for a while there, we didn't even have a car. We lived in Creechville, and Daddy walked to the, to the mill over here in Creechville, and brother, you just done the best you could. I mean, there wasn't somebody standing there with a hand out, giving you this, giving you that, giving you this. You got out and what? Or you starved and done with that. And because we're having everything handed to us, and now that in, in America, we have an I want it now attitude. Who would have thought a hundred years ago that you could have picked up a little thing and just picked it up with doot, 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 and talked to somebody in California? Who would have thought that? Who would have ever thought that? Now, listen to him, I should say. You'd talk to him this way, wouldn't you? I would have never thought that. People have died a hundred years ago would have never believed. They would have never believed that, that what, what I do all the time. All, all the time. Here in a few weeks or next Monday, matter of fact, I'm getting ready to go down to Charlotte, get on an airplane. Who would have thought that I could see my kids go off to school next Monday morning and I could fool around and mow grass and everything else and ride down to Charlotte and get on an airplane near lunchtime and eat lunch and be sitting in, in Washington, D.C. in an hour and a half and, and be able to preach in Maryland that night. Who would have thought that? They would have never believed that. They would have never believed that that would have been possible. You can eat breakfast in New York, lunch in, in uh, Texas, and supper in Los Angeles. And just think that people do it all the time. But you raise them people up that lived in the 1800s and ask them if they could eat breakfast in North Carolina and eat supper in California. California was a, a, a year and a half deal, brother. I mean, six months at least on, a, on, a, on horseback. But we are living in a day when prosperity has produced an I want it now attitude. They said uh, somebody developed a steam-operated automobile, and they said it would be it would be more efficient, it would be much cleaner and much cheaper than gasoline-operated automobiles. But it would not even get off the ground because it took ten minutes to warm up, and the American people will not wait ten minutes on anything or anybody. But everything is going to be doop, 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 
Just like that. They said nowadays, I heard that I heard a Catholic church down in Atlanta had a drive through confessional, man. I mean, where you could, where, you know, if you're in a hurry on Sunday morning and you want to confess your sin, just cruise through the drive through you know. I've done this, done that, you know. One right after another. They call it toot and tail. That's right. Can you believe that? I, no kidding. This ain't no lie. I heard about it. Down there in George's place somewhere where honest, honest before the Lord, this is no lie, they have a place where a funeral home where you go and visit the family when somebody dies and they got this dead body laying there in a glass window and you just drive through, you know, nod your head, you know. Or so, really, that's a, that's the truth. Brother, we're living in a time when we're not willing to wait for anything. People will not sit 20 minutes and listen to a preacher preach about uh, the eternal things of God, heaven, and hell. We don't have time anymore. We want it. I want it now. Don't give me that pie in the sky and the by and by stuff. I want my what's coming to me right now. That's a dangerous trend, young people. The Bible says, wait upon the Lord. Learn how to wait. Did you know a kid won't appreciate something that they don't have to work for and help pay for? I knew this guy, he had about seven new cars by the time he was 21. There'd be cigarette burns in the, in the car, in the seats. They had the tires would be wore off of it. It'd be out of line. But you let that kid go get a job and pay them car payments, they'll make sure that thing stays right. They'll make sure them floor mats is took care of. They'll make sure it's not abused. That's what's wrong with our nation. Number two, prosperity has a tendency, listen to me, prosperity has a tendency to turn the heart away from God. Do you know that? Greatest man that ever lived, wisest man that ever lived in the Old Testament was King Solomon. In 1 Kings 11, 4, the Bible said Solomon's heart, he had all these wives. He had 700 wives, 300 concubines, and the Bible said his wives turned his heart away after other gods. Belshazzar is a picture of this in the Bible. The rich young ruler is a picture of this in the Bible. He had so much possessions that he refused the Lord and turned away from Jesus. He came to the Lord one day and he said, Lord, I want to go to heaven. And the Lord said, you sell everything you've got and give it to the poor. And he loved his possession so much that he was willing to hold on to his possession and die and go to hell when he left this world. Prosperity has a tendency to turn a person's heart or a nation's heart away from God. If you don't believe what I'm saying, go out and visit it. You will have more response. The poorer the neighborhood you go in, the more receptive they'll be to the Word of God. That's right. Go to the richest, biggest, fanciest house you can find in Charlotte and go up and knock on the door and say, I want to talk to you about Jesus. And watch what happens. You'll get a Doberman behind you and see your riches. And shortly, really. I mean, you ain't going to get nowhere. Now, what, what does it do to people? What, what causes people to get life? What causes people to life at the Bible, life at God, and life at church? You know what's wrong with you? You've got so much that you think you're all right like you are. You don't realize how bad you need God this morning. That's your problem. Now, they say that the United States has 6% of the world's population. 6%. And consumes nearly 50% of all the food. You've got 6% of the world's population eating half of the food. That's why Rolaids and Tums and Alka-Seltzers are making a fortune. Yet that we pile so much food down in us, there ain't nowhere for it to go, man. I mean, your body can only handle so much and we just keep piling it in, piling it in. And you know what that does? It has a tendency to turn the heart away from God. The average American has at least 300 calories a day more than their body needs. In a large American cities, drive down the streets, you see the lights, food, fun. It has a tendency to turn your heart away from God. Our attitude now is... We don't need faith to move mountains anymore. We've got bulldozers. We don't need penicillin, our prayer, when we get sick. We have penicillin and other medicines. We don't need the Bible to tell us where we came from. Science is doing that for us. 
We don't need the church to take care of us anymore. That's outdated. The state will look after us. We don't need salvation anymore. Repent. Positive thinking has now replaced that. We don't need Jesus in our hearts anymore. We're Einstein and the great thinkers of the 20th century. We have so much on our hands that it's turned our heart away from God. And I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, our nation is in trouble before God. Before God. Many people used to be real dedicated to God. And still they started making a little extra money and prospering. Now they lay out of church half the time so they can go spend all this money they're making. Now I'm going to tell you what, that's a mark of a fool. If God blesses you and you start making $25 an hour and you get a lot of money, you better remember where it comes from and honor God, put Him first, read His Word, go to church on Sunday because just as sure as He give it to you, He can take it back away from you. Number three, prosperity has produced a haughty, smart aleck, stuck up attitude among American people. People think they will bow to no one. Not me, buddy. You, the, the average... Have you... I've done a study on music and especially in rap music. And did you know that a big part of the lyrics in rap music says, quote this, nobody can tell me what to do. Do what you want to. I'll do my thing. Nobody's going to boss me around. Nobody can tell. We're raising a generation of brats, brother, who said, I'm not responsible for nothing. If you look at me as a role model, that's your tough luck. I'm going to live it up, blow my money. I'm going to party. And if you don't like it, take a hike. That is what prosperity has done to America. We've got too much without having to work for it. And you know as well as I know, this has not helped us spiritually. It has been terrible for us spiritually. People think nobody will listen to them. We, I, 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 we went down to Charlotte one day. We stand out on the street giving out tracts. One of them boys give a woman a tract. She looked at it, saw it was the gospel, and she said, No, thank you. I love my liquor too much. Another man come down the street a few minutes later. One of the boys said, here, this will tell you about Jesus. He looked like some kind of preppy college guy, you know. And he turned around with a sneer on his face and laughed and said, I'm illiterate. And kept right on walking down the street. Americans say, I don't need God. I don't need the Bible. I don't need church. Don't come preaching to me. I don't need nobody talking to me about how I'm supposed to live. You, you, they laugh at you all over this country. They, the churches. Listen, we have nice facilities, air conditioned building, paved parking lots. People have nice cars and still sit at the house on Sunday morning and won't even get up and drive over the house of God and hear about God, the one that blessed them with all this stuff to begin with. Let me tell you, in other nations this morning, thousands of people are starving to death. 10,000 people are dying daily of starvation. And two-thirds of the world went to bed hungry last night. And these people will walk miles and sit on hard benches and, and swap bugs and bees and mosquitoes and sit and listen to you preach for an hour and beg you to tell them more about God. Huh? You don't think we're in trouble? You don't think America is at its end this morning? People say, well, Clinton's got a plan. That's, that's what I'm afraid of. You're not going to sin against God and get away with it. You might fool some people, you know, by telling the nation us all pray. You know, for the people in Alabama that had the train wreck this week, and the worst Amtrak wreck in, in the history of Amtrak, 40-something people last I heard dead, maybe more missing. And they, they say, well, we're going to bow in a moment of silent prayer for them. Wonderful. And then turn right around and say, we want everybody to have an abortion that, ought to, that wants one. That's not going to fool God. That's not going to fool God. You might pull over some naive Christians, but that don't cut it with God Almighty. Hey, listen to me this morning, folks. You don't fool God. you got to come straight with God. you got to come clean with God. You cannot 
laugh out of one side of your mouth and curse out of the other side of your mouth and expect God to say, oh, what a fine, wonderful thing. God expects repentance. God expects people to get right with Him and turn from their wicked ways. That's what we need to do this morning as a nation. We're not willing to do it. Somebody asked an old man one time, they said, how come we can't have a revival in America anymore? The old man said this. He said, America ain't going to have no revival. They've got too much. And he said, they'll nothing, never bring American people to their knees until they lose what they've got. And then they'll get right with God. I don't doubt that. 25 million people may go blind in the next few years because of vitamin deficiencies. An estimated 200 million will die in the next 10 years of starvation. Now, I've seen them down there in Haiti. When we was down in Haiti working, we was out giving out tracts and we was going to different villages. We'd ride on a little pick back of a truck. And we'd go in this little village and people would just come running out of the street and just come running up to the truck like that. And we'd hand them out tracks just as fast as you could hand them out. And they'd just grab them and start eating it up. Go up here. In any, go to Asheville and go out on the street and stand there and see if they flog around you to hear about God. America has a haughty attitude about God. They said many years ago, Mexico officially stopped all tracts and missionary work in Mexico and took J. Harold Smith off the radio and gospel messages and shut the doors to the gospel. They said, we don't want it. We don't need it. In just a short time, an earthquake hit that place that was 7.4 on the Richter scale. Hundreds of thousands were buried alive. People were screaming, helpless. Houses fell in on kids. Schools fell in. It was a terrible, terrible tragedy. Sooner or later, every nation that forgets God will be dumped. Will be dumped. Economically, physically, morally. They say in Africa this morning, I read something that was hard for me to believe. In certain parts of Africa... 80% of the people have AIDS, the AIDS virus. 99% of the prison population. 99%, brother. What are we going to do about it? They say that in certain countries in Africa, the entire population can be wiped out. God is trying to tell us something in this nation. People say, no, man, I've got it made, man. We're going to eat. We're going to live it up. We're going to do our own thing. I know we're not doing right, but leave us alone. That's our problem. Prosperity is destroying us. You say the boy that fishes hits them pikes swishing through that water with them spears. That fish comes through that water just going through there doing whatever he likes to do. He has no idea that that boy's there with that sword getting ready to spear him. That's the way America is this morning. No warning. When that train wrecked the other day, as an illustration, my heart goes out to them people. Boy, it hurts me to think about people losing their loved ones in a place in something like that. That'd be horrible. Could you imagine while that train was riding down through there, they're probably just talking, laughing, eating, cutting up. They had no idea something that bad could happen that quick. Right off in that swamp. That's the way America is doing this morning. That's the way maybe some of you are living your life. Reckless. Forgetting God. You've got caught up in material things. School activities. Work. Girlfriend. Boyfriend. All these things. And it's easy just to push God right out of your life. But that's a big, big mistake. My advice to you this morning is, no matter how much you're prospering, make yourself Keep God first. I've seen so many men that got a good job, made a lot of money, but to keep their job going, had to work on Sunday and keep it. I told them, I said, boys, don't don't do it. Keep God first. Well, I've got to get this bill paid and that, this bill paid, then I'll be back to church. And it never does happen. It never does happen. If you have to take a loss, keep God first, because that's where it comes from to begin with. And He can take it away just like that. There's nothing wrong with being prosperous. 
I wish the Lord would prosper all of you. I hope He does. But the prosperity of a fool destroys it. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. I feel like there's somebody here this morning who says, Preacher, i am left God out of my life. I've tried to do it my way, and it doesn't work. I've tried to do my own thing, and I've just gotten one mess right after another. And I realize I need God this morning. There'll be someone here this morning to say, Brother Danny, I really need to put the Lord first in my life. I know I'm saved, but I, I really need to put God first in my life. And I want you to pray for me. Pray for me that I won't let prosperity and things, material things, go to my head and ruin me. Pray for me. I'd like for you to just slip up your hand, raise your hand, take it right back down. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Hands going up all over the building this morning. God bless you. God bless you. I see your hands. Now let me ask you something. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? I tell you the only way you can. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know how come you're breathing right now? Because God's letting you breathe. You know how come you can see? You know why you can think straight this morning? Because God's letting you think straight. He can take it away anytime He wants to. Don't be a fool, friend. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Come to the altar. Get out of your seat. Walk down this aisle. Get down on your knees. Say, God, I want you to be first in my life. Father, do what ought to be done in this invitation. Help these that lifted their hands to make that step.